teacher training series, Tips for Sunday Morning. This is the third episode for April 2021, and our focus for today will be the Anticipation Guide. Great strategies that teachers can use for all discipline areas for reading, for math, for science, and for social study. I am your host, Davida Austin-Smith, and I am a self-engagement consultant with National Geographic Learning. And I'm so happy to have everyone here today and to be joining me. Our tips for Sunday morning are really to help us to build a professional learning community throughout our region, where we come together to share current trends in education, here we share activities and lessons for today's blended classroom and the environment that we have in today's classroom settings, whether they're asynchronous or synchronous learning environments. And really, ultimately, what we will really love is that teachers will start, or leaders will start to send us tips that we will be able to showcase on our website so that we can really build a strong professional learning community. So let's get started with episode three. And our discussion for today is just to look at some quick tips that you can use in your classroom that are called anticipation guides. And I really love these because you can use them in synchronous learning environments as well as asynchronous learning environments to activate prior knowledge before you start a lesson. So let's talk about what are anticipation guides. So they're comprehension strategies that are used to activate students' prior knowledge and to build sort of curiosity about a new topic. So it builds interest in topics, it helps to stimulate discussion before reading, and helps to students to respond to questions, so build that dialogue with those why questions. And it also can be used to assess what students know prior to the start of learning, and then be used at the end of the lesson for an assessment for learning. So really guided, Focus assessment for learning on particular skills and topics that students will read, or if it's in math, those skills and equations and strategies that they'll participate in. So let's look at some of those benefits of anticipation guides, the process that teachers would use to set them up, and the uses. So some of those benefits, as I said before, it activates prior knowledge, it builds curiosity about a topic or a skill. And one of the really strong benefits that I truly believe that it builds critical thinking. Teachers can set up interesting statements, things that students will not readily find in the reading, but they have to figure out. So helping them to build those critical thinking, asking why questions is a form of building critical thinking. So truly a benefit would be to build some of that higher order thinking and have students to question and dialogue before they even read a text or start a unit of study. In the process, it could be used in individual, small group, or a whole class. As I said earlier, um, as we're learning online, it could be either used to a synchronous learning environment or an asynchronous, and I'll show you some examples. It creates why statements before and after an activity. And one of the things I like, especially as you're moving into higher grade levels, so this is a strategy that could be used even at the KG for early learners, but as you move into higher levels of elementary through high school, we really want students to rewrite any in-grade st statements of after a lesson. So they're rewriting their in-grade statements and they're explaining why, or they're citing text, the page number on the text of where they found the correct answer. So again, building those higher order thinking skills. And let's look at some uses. So we can use this during reading, for nonfiction or fiction texts. And then, as I said, across all subjects, and I'll show you some examples that you could use in your classroom. And it is a truly assessment for learning. So there's a purpose to this. It helps to build, as I said before, activate prior knowledge at the end so the students can assess their learning as they're reading or starting a new skill. And this can be used for a unit or a chapter opening. So very easy to develop. Teachers would just include statements in the anticipation guide that address key concepts or some of those possible student misconceptions. So why this can be used for assessment for learning, we always know as great teachers, before we even start a lesson, what are some possible misconceptions that a student may have? So you would put those in your anticipation guide to really help students to start thinking. You include statements that require making inferences from text. 
and also include statements that purposely generate argument and debate. So let's just look at one. So I want to just go back and let's look at how to develop it and let's look at your um, actual anticipation guide. And this is actually taken from one of our resources, Exploring Science. So within our resources, we understand the need for strong before reading strategies or these anticipation guides that help to build curiosity, help students to start building their prior knowledge as they're moving through a new unit. And then at the end of the lesson of study, being able to really look at their misconceptions that they may have had about a topic or to cite or to build inquiry about a specific topic. So let's just look at some of the sentences that were developed within Exploring Science. And this is actually taken from, um, without the answers, it was taken from the actual teacher edition of Exploring Science. So people who study living things in the environment are called life scientists, so helping to build that curiosity. Scientists classify living things into groups based on their characteristics. So again, helping students to build prior knowledge that they may already know about this skill or strand in science. And then at the end of their reading, did they agree with their statements before? Did they di disagree? And being able to extend this that they may cite in the text where they find the answers or explain why they changed their answer. So if you look at the third box, the student went from disagree to agree, and you have the student to explain why they changed their answer. And this is a great differentiation tool for English as second language learners as well. So anticipation guides, they don't always have to be in a written format because some of our students may have a difficult time. Really, this is used to activate that prior knowledge, build curiosity, and then at the end, assess for learning. So it can be completed orally. It can be done in groups or pairs to help foster learning. So some of those multi-level um, groups that you would build. The number of st statements can be modeled by for different groups or individual students. Use pictures, okay? Particularly, even if we take the English as second language learners, you can use pictures for your kindergarten or first grade, second grade learner who just use pictures in order to respond to the pictures. Use simpler sentences so the student focuses on the content not the reading, and you can differentiate the level of passages that the students would have to read, but on the same content. So those are some differentiators that you could put into the anticipation guides. So let's look at specifically for reading. When I say reading, that could be across an English class or a science or social studies skill. And I love those before, during, and after reading strategy. So you could just see here a full lens of how you could use them for a before, a strategy, a during, or an after reading strategy. So have students explain before reading their responses to each statement. So why did they pick the response? Why did they agree or disagree, even before your reading? Again, helping students to build those critical thinking skills and to build their communication skills as well. So building 21st century learning skills. And then during reading, have students to read the selection to find evidence that either supports or disconfirms each statement. So a great strategy to use as students are reading. And then after reading, I said this earlier, but have students to rewrite those false statements to make them true. Okay, so again, building on their misconceptions. Okay, and then use this as a discussion point in the classroom so that students can discuss what they have learned from their reading. Okay, and here's just a full lens again of those before during and after reading strategies. And if you focus on the after reading, this can truly be used where students can self-assess their own learning, use for an assessment for learning, support answers with evidence or examples. Before reading, students are making those clear predictions, a pre-assessment for their learning. So you see how we link between the before and after reading. And then just look at the during reading, facilitating the discussion and dialogue. Students may annotate their thinking during reading. So this is truly why this can be taken for elementary, but as you move it into middle and high school, have students to annotate on their anticipation guide, their thinking and their learning about a particular topic using the guide. And here's just an example of a reading lesson the students are learning about fables. A teacher um, used this in one of the schools that I worked in. And 
this is their before, you see after reading. And then you could take the same thing for students that have difficulty with reading, and they would just be answering true or false. So that's a way you can differentiate your anticipation guides. And let's talk about math in particular, because sometimes when people think about, or teachers or educators think about anticipation guides, they first think about just using it in a reading um, classroom only. But it can truly be used in math as well. So let's just look at some uses for math. It increases the comprehension while students are solving math problems by activating their prior knowledge about a specific math skill or a concept that they're learning for investigations and problem solving. And it's a guide. So students can use this as a guide by making those statements before you start a math lesson. Students can use this as a guide to help them to differentiate statements and challenge their thinking about a math topic or a concept. And again, just like reading creates the curiosity and it motivates students to read the text or a problem to investigate the concept that they're learning. So let's just look at an example of a math anticipation guide. And for this one, it's used for geometry. The same thing that you see in a reading class can also be transmitted to a math class. So you have your before, whether students agree or disagree. And then as you're teaching them, it helps to facilitate their understanding, building conceptual understanding of math concepts. They're practicing, so building their procedural fluency. And then after, you're going back and students self-assess what they have learned at the end of a lesson, okay? I've also seen teachers where the answers may change after learning to have students to show an example of the math problem or um, the concept in math. So that could be a way that you can extend with the anticipation guide in math as well. So let's just look at some clear examples of science. And I showed you one at the beginning, one that was taken from one of our resources, Explore Science. But really the purpose of anticipation guides in science are to help develop those scientific reasoning skills, understanding the scientific concepts. And I love number three, but that's engaging in aspects of scientific argumentation having students to build scientific argumentation through discussion, through debate, and also building those inquiry-based skills that after you use anticipation guide, they will use that in practical application and then go back. So you could use this in the investigations, um, inquiry-based investigations that students may participate in. And it also helps to develop reading comprehension ability. So many students, especially our English and second language learners, or even our students in special education, Something they struggle in science because of reading comprehension. So again, by having students to think about topics beforehand, this is going to be used for that activating prior knowledge. And then as they're reading, think about the statements and then be able to find or to explore or through a hands-on activity to be able to look at their misconceptions that they may have had prior to the start of the lesson. And here's an example, another example of anticipation guide in science, okay? So I love that this teacher actually added a column, not sure, because students may not know. They may agree or disagree, or they may not be sure because they do not have a basic prior knowledge of the key concept that you're studying, okay? So this is a great for you to even look at and use for a pre-assessment for where students are in their learning before you start. And then great, again, the teacher simply put more you correct, Students have to annotate whether or not they were correct or not. They may cite evidence. You can also use this in science in the investigation. What did the investigation find that they created? Or if they created a project, what did the data from their project and investigation show? So this is an example of a science anticipation guide. And I love anchor charts. So here's just an example. If you are back in your school buildings and a great way to use an anchor chart in your classroom, okay? So again, there's before reading. And here, here are your statements, your after reading, whether or not students disagree. So this could be great if you don't have students to actually write their statements, or if you have students that you're using this to facilitate learning during your lesson, you can use these anchor charts. I just wanted to show you an example within the classroom, how you can use the anticipation guide to facilitate discussions within your lesson.
Now, since most of us we are learning online, and so I wanted to share with you just some great digital tools that you could also use to create your anticipation guide. So one would be just about at every teacher's disposal, those Google Forms, okay? So this is where students can, in real time, put in their answers, and you can monitor and give feedback through a shared link by using Google Forms. Or if your school doesn't use Google, you may have some other shared um, drive where students can actually write their answers. You can provide feedback, and they can update during real time in an online classroom environment. So this would be great if you're having breakout sessions and you want students to um, participate prior to a lesson in a group and they can use a Google form or a shared drive to annotate their answers. And then as they're reading, make changes in notes, okay? Also, many of you may be familiar with Quizlet, but within Quizlet, you have the ability to create anticipation guides using their flash guides, flashcards. So the flashcards would be great because the flashcards can be created to give those anticipation guide statements, whether you agree or you don't agree. So this can be great. You could use the Quizlet at the beginning using the flashcards, and then again for the assessment for learning at the end, okay? Kahoot as well. So Kahoot, you can create your anticipation guide using Kahoot in the same manner. And then one that I'm now becoming familiar with is Nearby. And so with Nearpod, you can create your anticipation guides, but this is great because you can embed them into your PowerPoint. Students can annotate and dictate using Nearpod, and you can give real feedback, and you can actually have students maybe um, respond or extend their learning. So you can ask additional questions, okay? Those why questions are, why did you train, change your thinking? You can ask students in real time during a synchronous learning environment. So I just wanted to show you four digital tools that you could also use. So you have those paper-based, some of your traditional ways of doing anticipation guides, as well as digital tools that you can use um, within and with using anticipation guides. So I hope you really enjoy our tip for today. These are just quick tips that you can use in your classroom. Remember, our purpose of anticipation guides is to activate prior knowledge, to get students thinking before the start of a lesson, to build curiosity about a new topic, and then during reading or while they're learning a new concept, whether it's math or science or social studies, have students question and dialogue, look back at what they originally thought, okay? And then as an assessment for learning, students can talk about maybe why they changed their um, answer, they can cite actual text from their science or social studies or reading material, and then they can use this for their own assessment to assess their learning. So thank you for joining. Please view our website where all of our tips for Sunday morning are hosted, as well as any new webinars that we may be hosted or any um, other student-facing events that we may have. Thank you so much for joining me for today's session. And I look forward to hearing your tips or you sharing your tips with our broader community as well. Thank you so much and we look forward to seeing you next week.